Welcome to a new video from the Circuit Coder YouTube channel. I'm really excited for this video because in this video I will show you how to make hack blocks. Okay, so this was made in Scratch 3.0. If you are using another version of Scratch, some of these blocks may not work. Okay, so let's start. To see some example uh, codes of the blocks, you can go to the Scratch project that I made. It is on the description, or you can look for it on my tutorial tutorial account. Okay, so well, uh, this well, it and the project there are four blocks. Okay, um, but if you want extra blocks. I'm going to show about four more blocks. Watch this video until the end. Okay, so I'm going to to start with the uh, blocks of the video, which is the special keys that are not normally found on the key block, which is on sensing. Uh, it's this one, the key pressed. Okay, and also I'm going to show you how to make it detect when you scroll with the mouse and uh, it will also detect when you stop the button and you can also make key patterns okay so and so these are the scratch box okay and for the exclusive video blocks i'm going to make a turbo warp block and a few other things that uh, also a hidden block. Well, not exactly hidden, but it you can find it very easily on the scratchator. Okay, I will also show a few other blocks. Okay, so here I'm going to start with the special keys. Okay, I'm going to make a new a new sprite so that you see how I code everything, and you see how it's not a trick or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna name it hack blocks. Now, um, we first you need a flag clicked, okay, and let's make it detect when we press a key. So let's put here a forever block, and now, um, we add a if block to detect our boolean, and here we have a key pressed, okay. So, normally you can see this, and in this example I'm going to use the space key, okay? But if you look closely, you will see how there is no enter key, okay? And I'm going to make it detect the enter key. Right now I'm going to separate this tag so that the this one doesn't activate itself, and I can show you the hack blocks, okay? So, here it says if the key is space pressed, okay? Um, and now I have to show you, okay? So um, you grab a join block, okay? And when you grab a join block, it will join two words or two values that you give it on the input, okay? This is the first input and this is the second. In the Scratch's example, which is apple banana, you can see how it joins apple and banana, okay? Uh, Oh, but there is a space here on Apple, so that there is a space. For example, here, if you remove it, it gives you an apple banana, which I don't even know what it is. <laughs> okay, so, um, also, if you add an empty space, you will see how it only returns banana. Okay, make sure that it isn't uh, a space, okay? So, you leave it blank, okay? Blank. You can leave any of those blank. I'm going to leave two of them blank in this example and you can see how it doesn't return anything see and here I can uh, write enter and see how it returns enter so I can put this here and it's as if it's a key enter pressed okay so I'm going to press enter and hold see it says true I'm holding the enter key I can even press a space wait and now I'm going to hold this space key and I'm holding it and see how it's true. 
Nighthop stopped holding it, that needs false. You can do this for any key. You can also use the exclamation mark. Wait. Okay. Um you have to type it. See? And it has true. Also wait, here I wrote a lot of exclamation marks. See? True. Okay, make sure that you don't write it incorrectly because if you write something like this, it returns false. And I mean how are you going to press this key, right? It's like leaving this on banana. There is no banana key. I mean, it's not like a key named banana. Okay, so you write here the key you want, enter, and you can make it do something um, that you want. Okay, so um, here I'm going to make it change the variable by one, okay? When I press the enter key. And that's a white box so that it doesn't do a lot of things. Okay, and I'm going to activate the script. See, I can press the enter key, and it will make the the variable go higher. Okay, now you can do this with any key. You can also add, for example, here a period, and when I press the period key, it will change it by one. See, I can also remove this block but it will add values too quickly, see? That's why I added, I added the weight because, I mean, if I hold it... Okay, also there are some keys that don't work. For example, the backspace key won't work, okay? Uh, some keys like this won't work. The shift key also doesn't work, okay? Uh, it's because of how Scratch is made. I think that they work on Scratch 2.0, but that can only you can only get the Scratch 2.0 on the offline editor. Okay, so these keys don't work. Okay, the delete key also doesn't work. Wait, let me activate it. See, it just deletes the stack. Okay, so um, well, this is for the a custom keys. Okay, you can use any key, just make sure that it works. Okay, on the description, I will leave a list of the available keys. Now, I'm going to show you another cool hack. If you wanted to do patterns, okay, um, there's not like uh, when keys press an order block. Okay, so to get it, you have to go to the extensions and choose the make me the makey make extension okay this is one of the most famous hacks okay because the makey makey in case you don't know it it's like a small Arduino and you can connect cable street and you can make it so that you can make circuits in real life I mean for example the most common example is to connect all those cables to a banana and you can connect this to scratch and like when you press the banana, make something happen on the scratch screen. Okay, I will make a tutorial of that later. Okay, but as it turns out, the makey makey works exactly as a keyboard. I mean, it it gives the output exactly as a keyboard. So, um, for example, when the space key pressed, it actually does the same thing that this block. Okay, I'm going to make it again change the variable by one when I press the space key see okay um I'm going to um, see it does that they do the same thing so um you can also use the other hack that I showed earlier with this one because you can't use it with this one this one doesn't accept inputs but this one does, so I can add the entry key and it will let up, okay? Now one thing, um, the makey makey block doesn't add a pause just like the space key, okay? But that's really the only difference, okay? So it works just like a keyboard. So now the next hack, here 
do we have to press in order okay so here you can select any order that you want I don't know like left right up down where value you want okay so for example you can add a project you can make a project for a decade like you have to make a password and you have to guess it but it's a pattern okay so here for example it says up down and it's up and down and it changed this by one okay so um, this is actually a very popular trick but I mean this is like you can, there are some preset patterns but if you want to make your own pattern it's the same thing you cannot join and you delete the first input one of the inputs and here you put like up down left right down left this one is not on the menu you can search it yourself okay and now I'm going to do up down left right down left see it changed the variable by one and you can even add it with letters okay so for example you can make it when the S key of course okay um S and then up wait it has got to be in lowercase see I press the S key and the up key and this works with any key for example I'm going to make it so that when you type my scratch username it changes the variable by one okay so let's type this in wait a moment okay so on this case um this has to be there's no gestures on your key as I said earlier so you have got to separate everything in spaces see okay so you separate all the keys and then you type it see and I type just this real and these change the variable by one okay so now um if you want to add a space for example I want to write up up pull a banana in this case you're probably thinking that you have to add an extra space okay but if you add a space okay um if you add uh, extra space I'm going to try to uh, type apple banana it won't work if you add a space okay now why is this because space aren't considered as the spaces if you want to add a space what you have got to do is to type space and see the variable changed wait again see um, you can try this yourself. Now, um, the next hack is to make the mouse cool. Okay, in this case, I'm going to show you because the script is well quite complicated, but I'm too lazy to find the blocks. Okay, so um, the okay, this only works if you have a mouse. Okay, so as you know, the mouse has a scroll wheel. Here, where are the arrows? See, so. What I will do is that I will add a when upper key. Okay, so the when you slide up the mouse scroll, that is the down. It's as if you press the down arrow. And if you make if you scroll down the uh, the wheel, you can see how it says down scroll. Because when you scroll the down key see how I scroll down the scratch page here this blank space and the upper key well when you slide up it will make the slide up okay so um, when you press okay so when you make it slide down it detects it as the upper arrow key okay so then you just add this as uh, if it's not pressed because when you scroll down it just sends it like really fast so by when it goes to why when scratch goes to the next block it's already not pressed so then it just down scroll but if it is still pressed because you can't release the key fast enough to make that okay so that way you can tell the difference between the upper key and the down scroll 
Uh, if you didn't want to understand this clearly, don't worry, you can just go to a project and backpack these blocks. Okay? I'm going to show you how to backpack blocks in another video if you tell me on the comments. Okay? Now, on the top bottom re detector, which is something that a lot of people want, but they don't know how to do it. Okay? And here I'm going to show you how to do it in two ways. Okay? So, one, okay, so this is usually used for thumbnails. Okay, so the first way is this one. Okay, so it's all of this tag. And here it says that when the green flag is clicked, it will reset the timer forever. Okay, so I'm going to click the green flag. Okay, I'm going to show that timer. Let me show it because it's under the variable. Oh, and I, we're no longer going to use the variable, so... Here, you can see the timer that is zero, okay? But when you stop the button, it will stop resetting the timer because you stop the forever loop. So see how the timer now starts increasing? So, uh, when the timer is bigger than 0 0.1, and I think that you're catching me right now, right? So, um, it takes it 0 0.1 seconds, if the project is fast, it'll take it about 0 0.1 seconds to reset the timer, okay? So, this waits until you, the timer is more than 0 0.1 and that way when I click the stop button, it says that I press the stop button. See? Now, um, I'm going to separate this block because if I don't do that, it will like start saying stop button press forever. And this way is to show thumbnails. Okay, so if you're wondering what is a thumbnail, it's like the thumbnail of the video. It's like an image of a project. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. Here, for example, this for the 3D tutorial is a thumbnail. Okay, that's a thumbnail. So people usually want to show a thumbnail when you um, press when you press the stop button, okay, because it stopped using the project, and this can also be useful to save the thumbnail, okay. So you can make it hide, okay. So this is one way, okay. So here, um, on the first way, you can just add a show block, and the second way to show the thumbnail is that the ghost effect. I think you already know what it is. It's like hiding the sprite, but it's just still there. I mean, you just cannot see it, okay? Um, it's there, but you can't see it, okay? So that way, um, you can use it to detect if it's other blocks or it has a lot of uses, okay? So, uh, um, this is also used for clothes, okay? So, um, when you press the stop button, it resets. It's as if you press the clear graphic effect, okay? The stop button works just like that. So it will set the ghost effect to 100. So when you press the stop button, it will clear the graphic effects. Okay, and it will show it. Okay, here I hide it. Okay, so here you can see a ghost effect. It's 100. I stop this, and it goes back. Boom. Uh, I press the green flag, and it goes back. Incredible, right? It's as if I press the clear graphic effect. Wait, let me click the wrong flag. See? It goes back. So this is really useful. And you can make it go to a front layer because if you have a lot of sprites um sometimes it um if you have a lot of sprites it gets covered. I mean it's like for example if I'm do this okay and I'm like just going to add a black square simulating the thumbnail. I'm going to write thumbnail here. Okay, and for example, let's make this one, like, when I press this space key, make it go to our front layer, okay? I'm going to clean up the blocks. Now, um, where was it? Okay, so now here I am, and it will hide, okay? But when I, I'm going to press this space key to make it go to our front layer, and here I add a different go to front layer. But if I don't add the go to front layer, I'm going to press the stop button. 
see how the special case overlaps so what a forever loop here and then it will work okay see now I'm going to remove this costume and I'm going to put it back to normal if you are wondering why did I separate this tag it was because it won't show this and I want this to show okay same with this one because it like it takes out uh, it takes it out space if it says that the stop button was pressed okay so I'm going to remove this and now I'm going to move on to the triple warp block exciting right okay so I'm going to tame it triple warp detector also it doesn't really matter okay um the name that you give the sprite doesn't matter okay so if you're wondering what's turbo warp I'm going to add a new a new tab here wait this is turbo warp and this is turbo warp okay so it makes projects run faster okay so I'm going to go back to my scratch tab so Turbo Warp can make laggy projects, like for example 3D pen projects, recasters, run faster, okay, with less lag, okay. So, um, a lot of people like to make it detect if you are, uh, if it's Turbo Warp, okay, if you're using Turbo Warp or if you are using um, the Scratch, okay. So, there are two ways to do this. There's one way which you need the FPS and you need a lot of blocks, like 20 blocks. So I'm going to show you the easiest way which you can make yourself. So first you have got to make a custom block, give it whatever name you want. And now here you add a boolean and here you add a boolean which is called is compiled. Okay, and now you create this. Okay, so you can grab this block, and here you have the turbo warp detector. So now I will remove this, and the block still here. Here we have our turbo warp detector. You can duplicate this to make more blocks. Okay, so now I'm going to go into turbo warp, and I'm going to compile this. See, this is my project. Now I'm going to go and see inside. And this is the turbo warp detector. And it says true. See? See? It says true. Okay? So it I'm going I'm going to reload this. And you can I so that you can see how these compile blocks. And you can see how there is no defined block. Okay, so you can just uh, duplicate those blocks and you can add an if block to detect if it's compiled. Okay, see, okay, so um, you can add this so that it does something like I think like move 10 steps. I'm going to add this crutch cat, so this is just for an example. Okay, so we can add it so that if it's compiled, it moves 10 steps. See, and okay, so you can use this in a lot of ways. Okay, so for example, if you have a laggy project, you can make it adjust the amount of lag depending on if it has a scratch or two work. Okay, this also works for Fork Force. Okay, if you're wondering how it works, it's because the creator of um, of Turbo Warp, well, he didn't he create Turbo Warp. He works with Turbo Warp and, uh, and Fork Force. His name on Scratch is Garbo Muffin. I'm going to type it here. Okay, so he well he works with Turbo Warp on Fox first, and he added a uh, and he coded it so that it looks for the is compiled box. Okay, on his profile you can also find the detector, but here I showed you how to make it yourself. Now another cool thing is how to make a blank sprite because now I think that you know that if you load it everything. It returns you to the name of sprite one, even if you add a random name, and then you delete it, it will return you back to the original name. But it's actually really easy to make a blank sprite. Actually, you just add a space, that's it. There you go. 
blind sprite. <laughs> this is actually tricks the editor, okay? And now for the blank costume, you just delete this, and that's it. No name. You can also, okay, but if you duplicate it, it won't then add a add to because it you can't have duplicated costumes. So you uh, just add a space, another blank sprite, and you can add as much blank sprites as you want. I mean, another blank sprite. Wait. Okay, so you add spaces until it lets you. See, and you can make a lot of blank sprites this way. See? Another cool way to leave crazy messages is that you can write something here like um, circuit coder coder O2. And here I'm going to write is Jersey Serio in scratch okay so here we have two messages and like well it's not exactly a message but you can write here when green flag first and you can write here circuit code or youtube this serio on scratch i'm going to delete the spaces that are here same with this one and here you can see this okay but this is a tricky thing i'm going to create a new costume and I'm going to delete these two ones. Boom! We still have this. See? And I deleted the costumes. Okay, now what happened? I mean, this simply won't switch the costume. Because since it doesn't exist, it won't switch costumes. They don't really work for anything. But it's cool, right? You can do the same thing with sounds. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this pop sound. It just it just goes pop <laughs> okay um and here i can add um um circuit quit coder made a tutorial of hack blocks okay and i will name it like this and now i can add this third sound Circuit Coder made a tutorial of cracked blocks. And now I will delete these um, pop sounds. Wait, it's the correct one. Wait, let me add a new one. Um, pop. Hold on. And now um, the sound, the sprite I made, the sound I made, now doesn't exist. But this is still here. Okay, so this is like another way of commenting. You can also add uh, join blocks and like join circuit coder is Yoshi Sario. And this is also another type of comment. Cool, right? Um now the hidden block that I told you. Okay, so most people if they want to know the position of the sprite, they do a lot of things. I mean they make a stack the tracks the position of the sprite and sets a variable to the position for example the x of the sprite okay this is the most common way and then they like critically um make this when green flag clicked forever um and then go do um set x to and they set to the my variable Okay, this is one way that a lot of people use, but you actually don't have to do this. Okay, so this will do the same thing as the block I'm going to show you. Okay, so it's actually quite tricky to find. I actually didn't know it existed uh, for one year, okay, before I found it. So here it is. Wait, oops. Okay, so backdrop number of state. And I think that you're probably wondering, what am I going to do with this? And I mean, this is just the vector name, volume, and my variable. Well, you can actually add another sprite, for example, stop and detector. Boom! There we go. Here we can get its x position, y position, the direction it has, its costume number, the costume name, size, or even the volume. How cool, right? Okay, so that way you can save like seven blocks. Okay? So that was all for today. And I hope you enjoyed the video. 
Okay, so if you like this video, you can give it a like, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and activate a little bell so that you can get a notification every time I post a new video. If you can also go to a scratch project which is linked on the description and you can give it a heart and a star. Okay? You can also follow my tutorial account which is just a tutorial tutorial if you like my tutorials or you can also um, follow my main account which is Joshi Sario okay so really that this is all for today and goodbye